From Interior Alaska's most trusted news source, this is the Fairbanks Evening News. Good evening. Thanks for joining us. Our top story, Interior Gas Utility presented a new draft map and timeline for a natural gas distribution system this morning. New Center 11's Tyson Paris Hansen has a sneak peek of the map and he files this report. Members of the Interior Gas Utility gathered this morning and presented a more detailed look at their plan to provide natural gas across the borough. Originally it just was a layout that would serve, you know, got within 100 feet of every lot. Now we've made, started, we're starting to put it into a system that the community can look at and review. Their new map will soon be available on the IGU website, which will allow more residents to find out if natural gas will be available in their neighborhood. Members of the Energy for All Alaskans Task Force discussed different timelines with IGU and asked how cemented the current plan is. It may change from what you see today, but um, as we do the hydraulic analysis to see what, how far we can move gas in, in the pipes we have. The primary build-out timeline mentioned by IGU's general manager would last six years, starting in North Pole as early as 2015. Each year a contractor would lay out about 100 miles of pipe, working around Fairbanks counterclockwise, ending on Chena Ridge. The chair for IGU says they could be surveying land in North Pole as early as this summer. Or if, if we're successful the way we're, we're headed, we'll be the, the right-of-way and um, survey crews that are looking for where the, um, where the lines will be run. Which side of the street are they on? Where are the other utilities? You know, eliminating conflicts as we look at 60 to 100 miles of underground pipe in the North Pole area. He added the biggest obstacle would come from efforts to build a North Slope processing plant. The state is currently working to finance both projects, but their first priority is on the North Slope, and IGU will have to wait. Tyson Paris Hansen, News Center 11. A proposal that would eliminate required local contributions from cities and boroughs for their schools has cleared the House Education Committee. The action came with the understanding that potential constitutional concerns will be looked at by another committee. The bill, sponsored by Representative Tammy Wilson of North Pole, repeals language that requires local governments to contribute to their schools. At a House Minority Press Conference today, a reporter noted that this is being called the education session and asked if that meant a natural gas line was being put on the back burner by lawmakers. After this, bills die, so people are wanting to see activity, want to see things happen. I, and I think it, it, it's probably accurate to say that it's been a little bit of a cluster, but people are moving, people are, are talking, um, communities are happening. Um, there's hardly any room to stand still, I and mean, it's like cramming for finals every night of the week. Officials with the Yukon Quest say a sled dog died yesterday on the race trail. Bashful, a dog on musher Dave Dalton's team died and will be transported to Whitehorse Yukon Territory for necropsy. Dalton from Healy was running in ninth place when he scratched from the race. Two Rivers musher Alan Moore won his second consecutive Yukon Quest yesterday. Moore crossed the finish line at 2.12 a.m. Monday. A former police officer and Yukon Corporation manager has been arraigned in Fairbanks Superior Court, charged with embezzling over $100,000. Zelma Fairchild is charged with multiple felony counts in the case. The accusations go back five years to 2009 when Fairchild left the corporation. Her successor hired an outside accounting firm to audit the records of the Fort Yukon fuel store, which Fairchild managed. She was released today without having to post any bail as the judge did not deem her a flight or public safety risk. Trial in the case is scheduled for the end of April. Also arraigned today, a Fairbanks man accused of burglary from last July. Daniel Bishop was arraigned in front of Judge Harbison. He faces one felony and two misdemeanor counts in the case, as well as a count of felony escape. Bishop was also arrested less than a year ago and charged with stealing a Doyon Properties pickup truck. Trial in the burglary case is scheduled for the end of April. Three men have been charged with robbing two people at gunpoint in the parking lot of the Safeway store on College Road early Sunday. 23-year-old Joshua Escalera, 20-year-old Ronald Walls, and 19-year-old Donnie Gunn were arrested at 3.30 a.m. Sunday, just a few minutes after police received the report. Police spotted a suspect vehicle and stopped it at First and Lacey, where the suspects were taken into custody. All three men were arrested on felony charges of first-degree robbery and third-degree assault. They are being held without bail at Fairbanks Correctional Center. Police say that while this type of robbery isn't common in Fairbanks, it's important to take steps to protect yourself. 
Um, obviously, you want to travel, you know, well-lit areas. Uh, don't deviate too much off because that's what people look for is the uh, dark areas. And obviously, if you're approached, um, we always recommend that you cooperate. Um, I know you may not want to. Obviously, when you're dealing with individuals, too, that may or may not be drinking at the time, uh, your judgment may not always be there, but we'd obviously recommend that you uh, cooperate. And welcome back to the Fairbanks Evening News. Members with the Key Coalition of Alaska will be hosting their annual rally tomorrow to advocate for people with disabilities. The purpose is to bring attention to certain policy decisions made by legislature. According to rally organizers, this year there are three different priorities that will be rallied for both here and in Juneau. The first is for a complex behavior collaborative that provides service to those who experience dangerous behaviors. Second is to eradicate the state wait list, which currently hosts 652 families and individuals waiting for services. And last, to create an Alaskan task force of direct support professionals. The rally will begin tomorrow at noon inside the Sadler's building. Most of the staff who have been involved in Key Coalition are from FRA this year and they're down in Juneau right now. People from around the state have descended upon Juneau and are presenting these platform items to our legislators. They'll have their rally on the Capitol steps, um, but we're really just providing um, support from a distance through the public opinion messages. Nowadays, it seems like there is an app for just about everything, but how about an app that is focused on the community, more specifically the UAF community? Welcome to the Living Battle of the Apps Challenge. That was conducted today at the University of Alaska Fairbanks Woods Center. Fifteen participants competed in front of six judges representing various aspects of sustainability and conservation. The idea for the challenge is the brainstorm of the local Verizon wireless communications company, which recently moved to the Fairbanks area. Verizon is donating $40,000 to UAF to select an app that will benefit the university and the Fairbanks area. Under the auspices of reaching Michael out to the students iPhone. and the faculty at UAF to come up with a, with a, a, a concept for an, an application that you'd use on a smartphone or a tablet that um, can help drive sustainability, that can help drive cost savings through energy efficient, efficient energy usage. Uh, obviously something very close and near and dear to not just Fairbanks, but to the students here on campus. What is the process? Many women take calcium supplements to prevent osteoporosis, but the pills have come under fire recently for potentially increasing the risk for heart problems. How can women protect their bones and heart at the same time? New Center 11's Monty Bowen has more in this week's health report. A woman who took calcium supplements for 25 years started to question her daily dose once studies showed the pills might increase the risk for heart problems. She has a family history of heart disease, so she asked her doctor for guidance. And she was very clear, discontinue taking them immediately. There was no upside in my continuing to take them anymore. Her cardiologist says many of her female patients want to know how they can prevent osteoporosis and heart disease. We know both of these things are going to happen as we age, but what is your own personal risk? What is your greatest threat to life? For at least a third of all women, that's heart disease. Dr. Watson says women can get calcium from other sources. There is absolutely no evidence that calcium from dietary sources like milk, like green leafy vegetables, things like that, those have never been associated with harm. The Council for Responsible Nutrition, which represents the supplement industry, says calcium is necessary at every stage of life, and for women who are not getting enough from food, calcium supplements are a safe option to achieve optimal bone health. Monty Bowen, New Center 11. The Health Report is brought to you by the Ear, Nose, and Throat Clinic, located in the Medical Dental Arts Building. Call 456-7768. Joe, Joe, what's cooking? Well, I got some <laughs> little bit of something, you know, in sports tonight. We have some UConn Quest news. Yeah. And you're going to hear from Brent Sass and what happened to him on the trail today. Also, a trailblazer was recently inducted into the Fairbanks Hockey Hall of Fame. All that and more next. <laughs> Welcome back, Interior Sports fans. It's Tuesday Sports Time. We start with some Yukon Quest news. One of the smallest fields ever in the Yukon Quest got smaller. It's Fairbanks' own. Cody Straith scratched early this morning. 
According to reports, his dog stopped about 25 miles before the Brayburn checkpoint. They had had enough. 11 mushers are left in the field. Rookie Matt Hall is the next to reach the finish in Whitehorse. He'll be the third to finish the race. There are eight more on the trail. And then today in a press conference, an emotional Brent Sass, who's going back and forth with this year's winner, Alan Moore, and was the early front runner in this race, talks about what happened in his unfortunate accident, suffering a concussion after falling off his sled to force him to withdraw from the race. Accidents happen, and um, unfortunately, it, it, the accident that happened to me on Coggin Lake took us, took us out of the race. We were a solid team until I fell down and cracked my head, and, uh, and it happened um, at a point in the race where I was really exhausted and, and trying so hard and then finally realizing that my brain, my body just wasn't in the condition to, to go forward. And it was hard because it was only 12 miles from a checkpoint, you know, and man, it was a talking about swallowing some pride. <laughs> Unfortunate into a great race from Sass, but in today's Nano Corner, we go to the ice and talk to the hockey team before they headed out to Michigan Tech last night. It's the last road trip of the season for the Nooks, who are fighting for the last playoff spot in the WCHA, but this team is already in playoff mode. Here's more. The Nanook hockey team has three series left in their regular season. The last two are at home. They're six in the WCHA and are fighting for a playoff spot. If you're not thinking about it, then there's something wrong. But I mean, I, like we told the guys, I said, you can sit and put all your focus in on what's going on in the standings or you can take your focus and put it on the ice and, and be ready to, you know, perform at your best. And, and that's what it's going to take. And, and the other thing is just to control the controllable. I mean, we can't control anything else but our effort and our, you know, preparation and, and then ultimately our performance. So. The Nooks have been on a roll, winning four of their last five games. This week, they play at Michigan Tech. The Huskies have the second-ranked scoring defense when UAF has the third-best scoring offense. They scored three or more goals in their last four games. The offense is finding its way, but defense could make or break this series. I think we've uh, we've been really solid defensively. Um, uh, as I said earlier, just uh, clearing the front of the net, uh, keeping everything to the outside. The guys, have, especially the defensemen, have been really good at that. So. I think uh, preparation and uh, mental toughness is going to be major for us coming this weekend, especially coming off a of bye weekend. Uh, it's just that uh, we have to. We had a good week of practice, and we ought to make sure that we come this week prepared to play as well and get a couple wins. This series is this Friday and Saturday in Halton, Michigan at 3.07 Alaska time. Nanook Corner, brought to you by Sports Medicine Fairbanks. In hockey news today, Ice Dogs announced that Ford Hans Gorowski committed to a Division I program. Gorowski will be a Lake Superior State Laker in two years. He'll join current teammate Kevin Aldridge in a year. Aldridge committed earlier this season. He will be a Laker next year and Gorowski the year after. They'll be joining former Ice Dogs Garrett Clement and Jason Angus. This season, Gorowski is the fifth leading scorer with 29 points in 43 games for the NHL leading Ice Dogs. And over the weekend, Hockey Week in Fairbanks culminated in the Fairbanks Ho Hockey Hall of Fame induction ceremony. It was the 10th year anniversary and hockey fans crowded into a section of the Big Dipper to see Gene Mahler's name added to the referee's honor roll. Mahler ref Alaska Gold Kings and Nanook Games was known for working the crowds. Jim Lewandowski was named Coach of the Year. He's won consecutive 16U Midget State titles and is the assistant coach to state tournament bound West Valley. Heidi Kubacek was this year's inductee. Kubacek was the first woman from Fairbanks to play Division I hockey. She played at the University of New Hampshire. She played for the 1990 U.S. national team and professionally in Europe. When Randy first told me about the Hall of Fame, I was um, very surprised but honored at the same time. I know many of the people who are in the Hockey Hall of Fame and um, to be included with them is a great honor. I had some great opportunities and a lot of people who helped me along the way, so I've been very fortunate. I was humbled and honored just to join that group and to know that uh, there are a lot of worth, worthy coaches in our town. and and. I'm honored to be selected by the committee for that. And that'll do it for sports tonight. Thanks for rocking with me for a little while. Mike Schultz is next with your full weather forecast, and we'll catch you next time. Hello, everyone. Welcome back into the Fairbanks Evening News. Time to take a look at the weather. Mike Schultz with you. I just took a look at the latest uh, observations. And at McGrath, it's cloudy, a little light snow, and 5 degrees above zero. 
So the clouds are moving our way. We're looking at temperatures warming up. That's a nice weather to pass along. We'll talk about more all weather in just a little bit. Another great photograph. This was shot by a, a very uh, good photographer, Ron Murray. He got this Friday night, a couple of guys standing there in the background, the incredible display from Mother Nature. And again, a beautiful shot there, great colors. As always, if you have a photograph to share, by all means, send it to photos at ktbf11.com, and we'll share it with the rest of the audience. Here's your numbers for this date. Normal high 8 above, today's high 12 below. Normal low 14 below, last night's low 30 below. We are expecting warmer temperatures, though. The record high, 46 in 2004, 53 below in 1932. And your sunrise and sunset works out to about 8 hours and 13 minutes, a gain of 7 minutes from yesterday. On the map, as you can see, a little snow falling around the Ketchikan area. They're looking for 5 inches of snow tonight before it all ends. The winds have died down around the Juneau area. Elsewhere around the state, a little snow in the North Slope and just cloudy skies over the Gulf of Alaska and elsewhere. And as far as our satellite is concerned and the radar, again, not too much indicating here. A little bit of a more system moving down from the northwest. I was talking about that last night. That will be bringing clouds and the chance of a little light snow. Lower 48 weather. Again, more rain falling across the Pacific Northwest. The rain and snow that was over Dallas has moved eastward today, and that shows up pretty good on the satellite and radar. You can see this storm system gaining momentum as it moves across the Gulf and is expected to tap off that moisture and become what they're calling a catastrophic ice storm from Atlanta all the way up to the Virginias and Carolinas. As you can see here, uh, lots of ice uh, expected, like I said, from Atlanta upward. And to the north is uh, expecting quite a bit of snow, up to a foot of snow in uh, some places like in the Virginias. So you've got to keep an eye on that system. And the overall jet stream, once again, is calling for continued moisture moving across from the uh, northwest to the southeast. A lot of snow across the Great Lakes and warming up over the uh, southwest. Back to Alaska for tomorrow. Here's what it looks like in the northern sections. Mostly cloudy from Barrel. Flurries at Fort Yukon. A few clouds in Nome. Over the uh, south central, or rather the interior, I should say. Mixed like cloudy skies, areas of light snow for Healy, Delta Junction, and Fairbanks. While over the southeastern sections, cloudy in Juneau. And the snow should be diminishing at, Fort, at uh, the Ketchikan area. Over the southwest, scattered snow for Cold Bay. Snow showers in Kodiak. Sunny at Bethel. And not too bad over the south central regions. Mainly cloudy skies with some snow showers around the Homer area. Time once again for our kids' weather. And tonight we have a young lady once again from our uh, school we're visiting, North Pole Elementary School, with a nice picture to share with us. Anytime you're ready. Hi, my name is Sophia. I'm in fourth grade in Mrs. Koss's class. And this is a picture of the Eiffel Tower. And it is that someday I'm wishing to go see. And right here is just a stormy day and it's becoming a beautiful sunny day. Very nice job, Sophia. Tomorrow night we'll have another young lady. This time she'll be asking us a weather question. Here's your forecast for the remainder of the night. 25 below, but isolated snow showers are possible later on, like tomorrow morning. And then tomorrow we're looking at cloudy skies, a little light snow at times, no real accumulation expected, 10 below. The good news is the temperatures will continue to rise slowly into the weekend, and overnight lows also rising. Finally getting out of those 20s belows to the teens belows, and daytime highs will be in the single digits below zero. And like I said, not too much of snow expected, but it is at least a little bit of a change from what we've had over the last few days. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we'll take that for sure. I yeah. mean, it's been pretty cold, and of all days, I, my uh, heater blew in my car, so I'm riding around in, with no heat on. Wow. Right yeah. I do not envy you. No, I'll try no, and warm no, it up no. for you. Wear a hat. <laughs> <laughs> and gloves. Thanks. That'll wrap up this edition of the Fairbanks Evening News. We are glad you could join us. Now, if you see news or have an idea for a story, be sure to call us at the newsroom at 458-1830. And remember to join us here six days a week at 6 and 11 or online anytime at webcenter11.com. Okay, from all of us here at the News Center, have a great night. We'll see you after Primetime Olympics.